Gather veterans, it's time to join the fight. The long war begins. This is The Long War. I'm Robbie B. And joining me once again are my partners in crime, Kenny Boucher and Wyatt Turk from Jack of Close Painting. What's up, guys? Yo, dog, great to be here. Yo, what's up, everybody? I think Wyatt fell asleep on my I love that. Wyatt, I did, not, yo. I did not fall asleep. He didn't. No, he just he brushed his mustache while he was saying what's up, doing his intro. Yeah. <laughs> Must be nice. Total pro. <laughs> Yes, Lou. I have fabulous facial hair. It's, it's a Rob just took that as an insult. He's like, oh, mustache. I don't have one of those. It's a blessing and a curse. I think I'm up to having to shave uh, like three times. It was like two times a week. Now it's like three times-ish a week. You shave more times a week than I do. How do you not have any facial hair? Yes. It's gonna I happen. can't wait. So we are we are back by we, I mean... Uh, the spiky bit side of the long war uh, from Warzone Atlanta. We ran the uh, long war 40k doubles down there. You didn't miss Friday. any content though. What? You were here last week. Yeah, but then I left in the morning and now yeah. I'm back. Yeah. As far yeah. as, as far as everyone who's listening at home is concerned, it's the same show. Yeah. Rob just wanted to express that he, he went out and did activities. Look, I, I did stuff. Weekend. Okay. I matter. All right. That's true. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it was it was it was a good event. We had a we had a bunch of folks show, show up. Uh, Manbeard brought Manbeard Painting brought a team of like three different teams, and one of them brought a cake as their display board. So they're like literally handing it out as as like bribes to their opponents oh, and stuff. That's, that's a good one. I was I was like, oh, that's I like that. I like that. That was a good one. There's a, a bunch bunch of folks there. For the event and it, uh, it went pretty smooth um uh best coast casey was there uh helping run everything on the uh on the app side of things BCP. so thank you thank you much for that mostly the mostly bestest okayest app for running events that's what <laughs> we call it <laughs> no nah, it's actually pretty good uh we were comparing notes the whole time i was doing an og spreadsheet and he was doing it with the app and we we're pretty close on everything. So I was like, oh, that's cool. All right. Touche, sir. Touche. Um, so that was good. And, uh, you know, now, now we're back. Not that you guys saw me leave. And it's just like I've been here the whole time. <laughs> was on Atlanta. It was a journey for you. Heard you got arrested, went to jail. I did get pulled over. For calling a cop a boomer. I did not call <laughs> a boomer. Um, then it was no. cool because he saw your ID and he realized you were also a boomer. So then. Me and the Georgia State Police had a, a slight disagreement, but we're both on the same page now. Yo, it's funny. All of my best getting pulled over stories are Georgia State Police stories. <laughs> like, nah, he's just like, I don't know. It was, it was just a very weird exchange. He's like, it's a good thing your picture ID is so good because I wouldn't believe this was you. And I was like, okay. I was like, oh, I was like, I have other IDs. Do you? I I can show you more. I've got one from Hawaii. Doesn't have my last name on it. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. That was interesting. And we got down there. It was a, it was a great venue. They got a new venue, and um, it was it was fun. Nice and big. Plenty of room for everybody. And um, talked to talked to a lot of folks I hadn't seen in a while. So it was good to get out and. Do that thing. Stretch your lizard man legs. Yeah. Freakishly long legs. I, th- I would say shake babies and kiss hands, but I think that's the wrong way around. I yeah. think it's the other way. Rob also doesn't sleep on a normal bed. He sleeps on a heat rock. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's that, that rock, that heat lamp, or he'll die. Why is this about me? You never even wear pants. That's my own thing. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Okay. We all got our thing now. I mean, right. if you had to wear, if you, if you didn't need to wear pants to survive because you'd be too cold, would you be wearing pants right now? No. Huh. If anything, not. these pants are making me hot. I wish I had those problems right now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I know it's been a, 
it's been a, a lot. Like the last few days, lots of cool things have happened. Obviously, we're going to cover the oh, yeah. tabletop marketplace. Tonight's show, Inquisition is back. Sisters get Miracle Dice. You know, we got lots to talk about there. Lots to promote. But first, our new tradition, which soon is going to be our old tradition. Because we've been doing it for months now. Why? All right. Would you rather never be able to leave your house again or only be able to be in your house for five minutes at a time? Never leave miles again. Yeah, I was like, this is easy for Kenny. He's just never going to leave. I barely, I, I already do like, God, how many seconds can I go outside and do the laundry and be right back? Like, fuck, I got to go store. Fucking let's make this fast. Like, I hate leaving this motherfucker. Easy. And you give me an excuse not to go places I don't want to go. I'm like, the genie said I can't leave the house, baby. <laughs> you got the genie like satellite tracking ankle anklet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like in suburbia, it's like I know for Rob it's more tricky because Rob likes going places. Yeah, but I like a good mix. Well, define house, primary residence. Six months a yeah, year. Like what situation? Property, like, My le- legal five American five. standards on a primary residence. What are we looking at here? No, it's like your it's like your home. So, so like if I have two houses, five, five. what's the situation there? Well, that's what I'm in saying. This, in this reality, you don't have multiple houses. You're not that baller. Okay, I'll, one and one. I shan't hey, ever be. Got who it. are those people? All right. Well, should we spice it up a little bit? Should I add some some addendums? Yeah. No, no. I like this one. No, no. I want I want addendums. <laughs> <laughs> See, Rob is scared now. He doesn't know what I'm going to say. Well, what if what if there were no delivery services of any type? So I'd have to. So how would I feed myself? Like. I mean, you'll have to like uh, entice walkers talk- by on the street, like. The can, one I, can I talk my girlfriend into going to the store? Yeah, if you have a like, I mean, if they're willing to take on that responsibility, you can find people on the internet that will bring you that's things. That, that's a delivery service. Oh shit! So all all food acquisition has to be face to face from your doorway. <laughs> yeah, from your entryway. <laughs> hey, you hey, you cannot you. leave. You. Come here. I'll give you, you some know, money to give me some and food. Like depending on how your trash situation is handled, I mean, like you can't leave. So, like, how are you going to get your trash to the curb? Mm. I mean, that was that was like already something you didn't even think about. Like, even if you had like all the delivery services out there, I mean, like you're going to try to convince your Uber Eats guy to like take your five bags of trash to the dumpster for you. It's going to get expensive <laughs> real fast if they even want to do it. I, so you, you where can, do you sleep though if you never if you can only be home five minutes at a time anywhere else in the world? Yeah, you just have to figure that out. So well, what's home? I, you could just you could just Airbnb. Well, I mean, obviously, I would have I would be like I'm saying that's why I was going to ask like residency laws because like does that extend to Airbnb laws? <laughs> like, uh, basically, I think I would have to just move out of my house right now, move into the shittiest shack in fucking I don't know, what, West Virginia. You know, and that would become your home. And that's my home. But I can only be in it for five minutes at a time if I'm going the Rob route. So then, since my primary cost is so low, I'll just live it up at the fucking Days Inn down the street. I mean, in West Virginia, but like, still. Free continental breakfast. So, the hotel is mine. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I'd, I'd be okay. I think I can manage in the current location. But oh, so there's, a, there's an important thing. It's like, how are you going to play Warhammer? You can't leave your house. Ah, you get people to come over, put a table in. I just quit. I just quit 40k. Play video games oh, that's, now. That's strong. I play video. I, I play video games now. That's my new life. If you said I can't play, if I can't get internet access or some shit, then I'd be like, okay, worst genie ever. <laughs> now I just got real. See, that's a real one. Would you rather no internet access or the only thing you can watch on the internet is X? <laughs> I mean, it would have to be meaner than that. Like, if you if the only thing you had access to on the internet was one thing, it would definitely be Sister Act Two. <laughs> <laughs> That's evil. 
Damn. Or every time I wanted to log into the internet for a sesh, I have to watch Sister Act 2 in its entirety. That's my yep, security code to log uh, in. Yep. It's like ad. It's like, no, it's you can't ad. skip it. It's a pre-roll, non-skippable ad. Yeah, yep. an hour and a half movie. Oh my God. It's brutal. That's a good one right there. This was admittedly weaker. Would you rather? Why had a really good one last week? Let's see. Well, not I, everyone, I had some other one ones. I didn't expect you guys to like pick being a hermit that fucking easily. Like I <laughs> thought about it. There's a saying called the Grinch doesn't come down out of the mountain and it applies to Kenny. And even you, apparently you chose, you chose it too. Wow, man. Well, I mean, like, I, I'd want to go outside and like get some sun or. Yeah. I mean, I like, go are you going to check your mail? I have, yeah, I, have, I have a mail slit. Yo, next level. Well, I'm just saying like, that's not for everybody. I mean, like, I couldn't get my mail ever again because I'd have to I have to go up to the office to get it. I would literally yell at my postal worker from my window and be like, front door's open. Just leave it in here. And it's just like slide money out the fucking thing. Here's a tip. <laughs> She's like, you're weird, just but all right. Take this bag all of right. track. Too. All right. Well, OK, so if we want to go a little bit harder, I got one that will affect your your day to day life and probably won't enjoy it. Would you rather always feel dizzy, severely so, or always feel severely nauseous? Dizzy or nauseous? Oh, fuck. Yeah. Not just a little bit, like a lot of it. Probably. I mean, I couldn't work if I was always dizzy. Nauseous is tough, too, but I guess you could choke it down. Nauseous, you could choke it down. It'd, it'd suck. You'd be in pain, but you, at least you could focus your eyes on something. Yeah. I don't. I don't like being dizzy. Couldn't even play video games properly if I was always dizzy. Mm. Which always comes back to that for me. <laughs> Nauseous, which would suck super bad. Probably. I'd have a miserable rest of my life. <laughs> this genie sucks. Does anything undo the nausea? Like if I get super stoned? No. There's no amount no of easy, bath salts. There's no I can easy smoke. outs in, no amount of bath in the world smoke. of Wishmaster. Dijin land. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we need a different genie. Yeah, Paul, genie yes. Jeez, an ass clown. Sorry. I, I don't I don't control the genie. He just it, it is. It's he a force of it. nature. It's like the Terminator. It can't be reasoned with, it can't be bargained with. It doesn't eat or sleep. And it will not stop until you answer these would you rathers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rob, do tabletop marketplace. Oh, yeah, that's my job. Um, all right. Well, we got two weeks worth of stuff. So coming out, going on pre-order this week for Delivery Next is a bunch of Beastgrave stuff. I don't know if probably more people play Beastgrave or Warhammer. Right. Now also. that it's not the crime solving vault, I'm, I'm not very excited about it anymore. It seems to have kind of lost a little something, at least at least in the circles I'm tracking. What is it called now? Beast Grave? What? It's called Beast Grave now? Yeah, yeah, Beast Grave. Beast Man AIDS? Pet Cemetery? Nah, just got nothing. So, you know, if it was like Warhammer Underworld's Pet Cemetery, where like if your dude dies, Why don't he we resurrects start? as a like minion of hell... And tries to kill you, like that could be interesting. We I mean, you just call it Pet Cemetery. Warhammer Underworld's Pet Cemetery. Yeah. I'm I'm all okay right. with that. I'm a little bit more invested now. Yeah, all right, all right, cool. Yeah. It's, not, uh, it's got a snappy uh, name, I'm with it. The the rip of Snarl Flanks is uh is coming out. That's the new war band. The rip? Rip Ripa's Snarl Fangs, which is basically the Goblin Wolf Riders. They made a war band album. Yeah. The OG ones. They look actually pretty tight. Like I kind of wish that was an army. Because I played those back in fantasy and they were funsies. They look like uh, um, Mongols. They have like the Mongol hat and like spears and they ride around. They're, they're dope. Uh, $30 US and then they got sleeves and all that stuff that you would expect. Um, yeah. And uh, Horse Heresy, the first wall limited edition book is coming out as well for $80 US. I think book one actually sold out pretty much immediately of the Solar War. And they're coming out, speaking of which, they, they're coming out with Solar War in paperback for $19. So there you go. If you missed it the first time, now you can get it in paperback. Then also going on pre-order this weekend for Delivery Black Friday weekend 
is the new Chaos Space Marine Sorcerer for $30. The Start Collecting Chaos Space Marine Box and the Start Collecting Vanguard Space Marine Box for $95 each, which is basically each half a Shadow Spear minus the Hobo Librarian and the Hobo Captain out of the Space Marine side. I'm pretty sure that's right, but if not, I reserve the rights back at any time for $95 each. And then, of course, the new Sisters of Battle Army Box uh, for $210, which a lot of people have something to say about that price. But if you think about it, it's coming out with the 25 models. They're basically ETB. They're not like slot and peg, but they're still monopose ETB. I guess monopose is probably the better, better way to describe it. But it comes with a codex. It comes with data cards. So if you look, if you compare it back to Shadow Sphere, like Shadow Sphere was a 160. If you had put a codex in there and data cards, it would have been like $215. So in GW money, there's logic behind it, which I can understand. Like, okay, 210, this makes sense. Whereas if you compared it to Blooded Phoenix box, which was all multi-part kits, some new stuff, no book, and 230, if they had put them, if they had made them all multi-part kits and put them in here, well, this thing would be close to $300 in my opinion. But that's not the case. They're going to come out with multi-part kits in the near future. Uh, there'll be some rumors. I'm sure by this point already swirling about dates and things on, uh, on that here shortly. Uh, and then Psychic Awakening Faith and Fury book for $40 US. So we know there's Black Templar rules in there. We're going to talk about them tonight probably in some regard. We know that there's other six trader legions besides Black Legion, besides uh, Thousand Suns besides Death Guard. So they're all going to have some sort of rules in there, and I'm sure we're going to see previews over the next week and a half about all that. So chances are it's going to be a must-have for not just the storyline, but also anybody that wants to play Templars or wants to play any of those other well, Just regular Space Marines, too. Oh, yeah, because like, they they're got expanding the rules for Chapter yeah. Masters, Chief Librarians, Chaplains, Tech Marines, Apothecaries, tech and yep. Ancients. So pretty much a must have for everybody. There you go. Especially in Marines. Um, so that's uh, that's pretty much all the stuff that's coming out new release wise. And then, of course, we know it's really weird. But if the rumors are to be believed on Black Friday weekend, when Psychic Awakening Fa Faith and Fury book comes out, the pre-orders will go out for the Blood of Ball book, which will hopefully have Mephisto on and rules for what we assume will be at least blood angels in there, but it could be more, it could be less. Who knows? Um, maybe some demon stuff. Word on the street. There's a demon book on the way to demons 2.0, but we'll see. Um, so that's like uh, kind of the big stuff that we're tracking for. What about release. the big new rumor about a new GW airbrush? Too soon, bro. I want it's it unconfirmed be, and salacious. I want it to be. I want it to be time stabbed. Two thousand nineteen. Should have never showed you that. I to be <laughs> I, you didn't show me anything. I'm just saying. I heard a rumor today that GW is going to make an airbrush. Oh, see, you're getting good at this job. You're like, uh, I heard a rumor. That was a thing. Can't reveal my source, even though he just revealed himself. <laughs> That was Sarah. She didn't. She she is not the source. I mean, I was going to reveal. They started details. selling airbrushes, man. Like I could, I could sell the shit out of airbrushes. Let me just say it. Let me just say it's going to happen. GW is going to license with a big company. They're going to get some sick laser etched fucking airbrushes with some sick LE additions on them. And what's going to happen is they're going to say airbrushing's cool. And now all the holdouts, all the fanboys who think airbrushing isn't cool, are going to now think it's cool. And now fucking airbrushing is cool. And that's going to be great for every airbrush manufacturer. Yes. Especially when GW's fucking limited edition airbrushes are going to be $250. <laughs> I got to, I got to fulfill our quota for, um, baseless, uh, predictions and go the opposite way. I think that games workshop is going to come out with an airbrush and it's going to be a cheap piece of shit. But all of the fanboys will say that it's the best one out there, regardless of any actual uh, qualities or objective facts about the airbrush. And they will overprice the fuck out of it. And then all that other stuff will happen, too. I like this in chat. Somebody said, 
AOS code says conscious paints are meant to be airbrushed. What if conscious paints are secretly GW's airbrush line? They already have an airbrush line. I know. Yeah, they do have an airline, so it it makes sense that they. Um, and J, JB Gecko, we normally don't talk about the. Uh, normally we don't talk about the address the comments, but he says uh, Duncan just said he wants to learn to airbrush, so. That was your pointer. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where you quote the great, the great man himself, but uh, he actually already knows how to airbrush. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, anyways, so uh, moving on. <laughs> Rob hates me. <laughs> What's that? Rob hates me. Never showing you anything again, ever in the history of ever. Um. No, I mean. <clears throat> This is some stuff that I have to I have to clear talking about with some people before before we see anything further. But you can always ask Duncan yourself on Twitter, I suppose. Anyways, um, so that's all we got for Tabletop Market Watch. That can't be all there is. And you said we had two two weeks to cover. It was two weeks worth of content. Yeah. Seemed light to me. Well, I mean, next this this uh, this Saturday, like the pre-orders are going to be fat because it's like yeah, it's two weeks worth of uh, two brand new start collectings of models you could not buy until now, like at least with the suppressors, and then the Mm -hmm. uh, they never released the obliterators, uh, right? Right, but they're going to come in that start collecting. Yeah, exactly. Uh, And then like everybody's favorite grimdark waifus are going to be in a super limited box set, early access. Well, yeah, those will be out Black Friday weekend. I guess we could talk about Necromunda, too. K.R. Quinn uh, reminded me. So this weekend, a Necromunda Dark Uprising box will be out. It's $290. Um, plus, you can spend another $65 on the plastic floor tiles. So the floor tiles themselves, it's a pack of four floor tiles. They're all one by one square. So when you put them really together, really impressed get, that you said that. A pack of what? four floor tiles. It actually flows okay. Yeah. Um, they're all the same tile. Literally, you get four of the same one. And it's two by two, and they you know, they lock into it, and then you can buy the starter set, um, which is going to come. So we talked about it earlier. There's a thing called GW Money, and there's a thing called Hobby Dollars. We obviously value our Hobby Dollars a little highly than the GW price tags on things, which is fine. You know, There's always that separation. I mean, you got Apple... You got whatever, you know, everything's expensive. Hobbies are expensive in general, but this box is $290. I feel a lot of calls this week from a lot of concerned retailers. They're like, why is this $290? And you know what? For the first time in my life, I didn't have an answer for any of them. I was like, I really don't know. It's kind of a mystery. Like, it seems like they're kind of putting a, um, a premium on early access content, which there there is uh, a new sprue in there. For the enforcers with the riot shields, those look really dope. Plus, you get the new Chaos uh, Cultist Warband, too. So there's this really interesting dynamic of you get this dope-ass terrain. You don't get the dope-ass floor tiles. You got to buy those separate. But you get the rule book with the campaign stuff and everything you need to play this particular game set um, with those guys. Plus, you get the old... Remember the old... Uh, Orange blast templates from the old second edition box set from 1998. You get those in there. Those are pretty. <laughs> cool. If you're if you're you know it like super OG and you're like that box set had black templars. I got black templars and blacks. Anyways, it's like 30, 20 years, 20 years later. So that's kind of cool. Um, you also get uh, the, the cards and stuff that you would normally expect. But what it looks like is happening here is that there's going to be some separate sets to come out of this. Like you'll be able to buy eventually just the just the terrain to make the zone more talus um, three dimensional and not go vertical. But then you'll also be able to pick up the uh, the platforms and the flooring, the little ladders, the steps and things like that as a separate kit. And that will, you know, enhance your uh, game gameplay, your game table and allow you to go vertical. So you can just do the street straight like walls and stuff. It's it kind of to me feels like. The Necker the box that they should have put out two years ago. Are these the curved tiles? 
So no, these are these are plastic. They're actually flat. They're not they're not curved because the resin doesn't cure right. Like the <laughs> ones. Um, they, they just have you no pushing ones. their fucking round earth agenda on me. <laughs> <laughs> they. They had no floored supports. These will probably have flooring supports and be one by one square. So overall, it makes sense in GW money, but it's still $290. Don't get it twisted. This is an expensive box set. You got to really be invested in this. You got to have a group. You got to be like, this is dope terrain. I'm going to do X, Y, Z with it. This is me. I'm getting it. Because otherwise, it's $290. Let's be real. Like, that's a lot of money for a single box set. Yeah. But to some people, it's totally worth it. And I get that. I'm not one of them. <laughs> no, that's a lot. So look for that this weekend. It's going to be interesting. Um, we'll have the full breakdown. I'm sure there'll be some sort of clickbaity thumbnail for YouTube, but I'll do my <laughs> best to analyze it and break it down and into as many digestible parts as I can. And it'll all be gluten free. Clickbait. You're the clickbait guy. I'm a masterful baiter. I like that. Now, that was a good tabletop marketplace. I just bought you like at least another five minutes. Well, I was disappointed because you spent more time being mad at me about the Airbus thing than you spent on tabletop marketplace. I think you just did that on purpose to buy yourself another five minutes. <laughs> Remind you to be mad at me. <laughs> All right. You just came back from Wars in Atlanta. You left the house. Well, one was in Atlanta because obviously it was Imperial Fist. Who won? Uh, Tau. Played by? Uh, I think it was uh, Richard Siegler. Richard Siegler won? Yeah. Oh, that maniac. Where's he at in the standings now? He's got to be I'm, getting close to Jim Vessel. I can pull it up. Pull it up. I don't, I don't, I don't know these things. We had an interview with Richard Siegler not too long ago. He won yeah. LVO with that Tau list. He also top eight it at SoCal Open with that Tau list. Um, Tau also won LVO, so Tau won Wars on Atlanta LVO. Wait, they won Nova too, and they won. And he won Nova. Yeah, so, yeah. so right now, uh, Jim Vessel is first, Nick Rose is second, and Richard Siegler is third. Oh yeah, Nick Rose won the boys GT same weekend. Oh, so he pushed up. Yeah, it's it's a pretty so like between. Like second and uh, third, it's a pretty close points margin. And then it starts to kind of skip a little bit. And then like fifth and sixth is really close. How far is Vessel goes away down from, from Rose? Uh, points? What's, what's 92 minus 54? It's only like 40 points. Yeah, that's how far. Woo! It is. It's a game. And Help then you. Richard Siegler is sitting at 1143. Damn. LVO is going to. LVO matters. Very interesting. Yeah. I mean, like, it matters for uh, Nick Nanavati, too. He's at 11 24 in fourth place. I think he got top eight at Warzone Atlanta. Yeah, he was top eight yeah. at SoCal as well. Yeah, any one of those guys is capable yeah. of winning LVO. And uh, second place was Iron Hands with Adam Abr- 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 Abramovich, best general podcast. Oh yeah, you got second. Uh, Congratulations, with Army Painter and all them. Yeah, yeah, no, you did great. Um, did he paint us? Did he paint us whole army with Army Painter paints? He did. It was a very interesting uh, blue, um, like a like a tur- turquoise. I want to go or like a teal, more like a teal. Very they interesting. A, they have an OG hot turquoise in the Army Painter line that I love. That's that's probably what it was. It's 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 very striking. It's different, but it's very striking, and I like it. Um, I actually bumped all the bits from his uh, converted flyers off him because I'm going to use them to make uh, the cannon on my Orions. I'm going to put the um, phallic shaped gun on the front of the Orions to simulate the Aries because I'm penis not buy gun. It. That's not what I said. Just so you know, it's all not. guns are phallic shaped. <laughs> That's you don't true. Have, you don't have to make that, that, that distinction. Look, I told YouTube that we were kid friendly, okay? That's Did you? Dude, you fucked up because I straight yeah, up yeah, yeah. said we are not. <laughs> yeah, you fucked up, dude. <laughs> taking it, taking it all back. So, yep. So there's that. That's awesome. So Tau domination continues, guys. Uh, so the Space Marine crisis, not what everyone thought it would be. Tau has been crushing. 
not just Richard. Richard obviously won two of these events, but he didn't win SoCal, though he did well. But Tao still won. So Tao, they still have the prescription for KO when it comes to fighting these Marines. <clears throat> Pretty awesome stuff. Uh, Long War doubles at LVO, guys. Uh, tickets on sale. There's plenty of room left. We only have we've only sold 70 tickets, 70 teams. So let's try to get it up to 100 teams like we did last year. Uh, 200 players. Uh, the software is even better than it was last year. We had to do it or this earlier this year. We had to do an OG spreadsheet still. And now the app is so much more in tuned. Can't uh, confirm. And let me put it out there too. A lot of people have been asking questions. Uh, if we, with me and my buddy play Space Marines, we're two different chapters. Does it break our shit? It does not. Uh, it's a doubles event. It's the Wild West. You're both your own army. You do whatever you right. want. You pull your resources, your command points together and play. The only restriction, reminder, thousand point force organization. It's rule of two, not the rule of three. Yep. So yes. tickets on sale. <laughs> Go to LVL's website. Snag up your doubles ticket. I'll be there. Uh, Wyatt will be there. Rob will have people there. Should be a good time. Or I'll be there if I drive. Yeah, not no big deal. I mean, word. I would love for you to come back out. We can go get steaks again. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. You guys, you guys steak shamed me for that. I mean, you put a dollop of wasabi the size of like a quarter on a piece of a $400 steak. And it tasted delicious. I forgot that you don't have a sense of taste because you don't have a sense of smell. I have I have none of the buds. So, n- lesson learned. Never give him a slice of a $400 steak again, Wyatt. You can no, just yeah. give, me, give me some burnt shit and be like, yeah. hey, this is expensive. We're like, yeah, it tastes great. You could have literally <laughs> given him like it. fucking yogurt. It doesn't matter. Yeah. No. Well, I didn't, I didn't know that. I was trying to be nice because it was such a an uh, expensive steak and y'all weren't going to buy it. So I'd be like, okay, well you can have a bite of it. To My see CPA what this was is there all about. and he told me straight up. I'm not allowed to buy it. He's like, I don't, I don't want you to buy that Kenny. <laughs> yeah. But I gave you a piece and was it not definitely worth how much it was? Um, it was worth getting a free bite from my best friend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who paid for it? <laughs> I will say that. So, so thank you, Wyatt. Who, who only the previous night I took care of and took took him back to his hotel room because he drank too much. That's true. I did do that. <laughs> that was the most infamous night in drinking in a, in a hotel room at a convention yet. Was it though? I mean, like I didn't order room service to my bathtub. Like some people. I was already drunk at that point. <laughs> I also ate lettuce off the floor or salad. You're salad right. It wasn't infamous. It was the most hard I've ever seen it. Okay. <laughs> it was brutal. I, um, yeah, I, I felt for you. Uh, I was panicked because I was also like a nine drunk. On <laughs> yeah, you were also super I was drunk. like on a scale when I did, I was a nine. He was like a 14 and you know, now I have to take care of this guy. I'm like, I'm fucking panicking. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> But hey, um, woke up in the morning and played for you. Fuck, I, I am so impressed. I would have called, I would be like, trip is ruined. I ruined the trip. Nope. He did it. Mm. He made it nothing, happen. Nothing a little uh, water Motrin won't fix. Old, like old army. 15 recipe. fucking energy drinks. Yeah. Bunch of, bunch of Powerade. <laughs> so, next promotion before we jump into Inquisition uh, lifetime memberships. Rob. Oh. This is, what's my line? Longward.net lifetime memberships right now. Uh, esports jersey. Yep. And if you already have a um, lifetime membership, you can just get the esports jersey over there at a reasonable, reasonable price because right. we don't want any feel badsies. Yep. You can get the new, brand new Longward TV. Uh, logo updated logo on an esports jersey for November only. And if you sign up for a lifetime membership, you get a $35 store credit. Good on the longworth swag.com. And from there, you can actually get anything you want if you don't like the esports jersey. Nope. See, why would you have me do that? You do that way better than me. 
I also have a promotion. Oh, wow. Uh, brand new episode of another podcast came out today that I was on. I uh, did an interview over at Cry and Moe's Tabletop Alchemy podcast. And that episode is out right now at cryandmo.com. So it's C-R-Y-I-N-M-O.com. I'm going to go check that out. I'm glad they didn't register cryandmoo.com. Cryandmoo? Be, yeah, that'd be just weird. So get on them. Should have to go listen to this podcast. See how my man did. So Inquisition is back. Or is it a situation where we don't call it a comeback because they've been here for years? I mean, they've sort of been here. They've been indexed here for years, I guess. Do I have my No, they haven't been here. They just come back. I forgot. <laughs> so, oh, wait. Hey. They're, they're garbage. So, so break it down. I saw some of the stratagems. Uh, I don't know any of the units. It's been a billion years since I looked at a fucking Inquisition book. Rude. Oh. They have feelings too, bro. They have some interesting abilities. They got some cool stuff, like the ability to bring an Inquisitor with uh, Space Marines and not break any of your cool special rules. Yep. And they don't take up a uh, Force Orc slot in your detachment. So They're you just, just bring there. Inquisition into your Space Marine, Space Marine army and still do your Thug Thizzle. Yeah. Just shows up and he's like, hey, where's where's the Prius? I got the jar of mustard yep. and my NPR radio going. Yep. Hashtag Dirty Mike Life. Rob, can you break down the new stratagems? Yes, so we got Cyclonic Torpedo, which is 4 CP. Use a stratagem in your shooting phase if an Inquisitor model from your army is on the battlefield. Select a point on the battlefield and roll 1d6 for each unit within 2d6 at that point. Subtracting 1 if the, from the result if the unit being rolled for is a character. On a 4-up, that unit being rolled for suffers d3 mortal wounds. You can only use this stratagem once per battle. Yeah, it's like the neck round 1 and everything. It has a way smaller prereq, but a higher CP usage. And it's very good against certain armies. Could definitely see that. Very uh, powerful inc- versus certain castles. Yeah, which seem to be out there these days. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. One CP Inquisitorial Mandate. Use the stratagem before the battle. Select one Inquisitor model from your army that is not your Warlord and determine one Warlord trait for it. It is regarded as your warlord for purposes of the warlord trait. If this model is not a named character or a vehicle, you can you can then give one relic of the Inquisition to that model. All the relics in your army includes must be different and given to different models. You can only use a stratagem once per battle. So classic. I like it. it I mean, it's it's totally worth it though. Oh no, no, that's why. a that's a classic. We, a lot of everyone's getting stuff like that. So yeah. Yep. This one's kind of interesting. Once CP sees for interrogation, use a stratagem in any phase after an enemy character unit is destroyed within three inches of an Inquisition units from your army. Gain D3 command points to subtract one from the leadership okay. characteristic. That's one you're going to have to write in the back of your hand to remember. Yeah. For how often that uh, comes up. Yeah, I mean, within three inches, you would have had assault. Like, I mean, it's uh, going to happen at some point. Uh, but that's what I'm saying. Is like That's going to be one of those ones that you're like, wait, there's something I'm supposed to do right now. What is it? Yes, D3 more. Yep. Man, I don't know. Uh, one CP requisition, use a strategy in the shooty phase, the fight phase, or your opponent's charge phase with an Imperium infantry or Imperium biker. Unit from your army that is wholly within six inches of a friendly Inquisitor fires Overwatch or is chosen to shoot or fight with. I guess add one to it. Um, re-roll hits a one. Oh, re-roll ones. Mm. Damn, those are kind of like this. But it has to be against something like the Inquisition, uh, the yeah. Inquisitor's quarry. So he has to be like, um, like for Order Malleus, it's against demons. For her, it's yeah, against demons. Th- th- those are not that spicy. Progressive a guy less spicy. Do they have some sick warlord traits? The warlord tra- traits are kind of decent. Um, let's talk about them. So you got, you can be a radical. A once per battle, you can reroll one hit roll, wound roll, damage roll, saving throw, psychic test, or deny the witch for this warlord. Just the warlord? Just the warlord. Sucks. What else? Uh, Puritan. Improve this warlord's invulnerable save by one to a maximum of three. Sucks. I hate warlord only shit. What else? Uh, add one to this warlord's leadership. I'll be caveat. Unless it's like a slapling. Continue. 
<laughs> Increase the range of his unquestionable wisdom by six inches. What's the what's unquestionable wisdom? A reroll? I know what's his face has it because he loses it when he summons a deuter. Unquestionable wisdom. But I get maybe a, fear, a plus one leadership bubble, maybe. Huh. I don't know. Oh, here it is. Friendly Imperium units can use this leadership ah, oh, instead of their own one of six. Who cares? Um, yeah, it sucks. Uh, Continue. Uh, this warlord can perform a heroic intervention if there are any enemies within six instead of three. And when doing so, can move up to six instead of three. Uh, Standard. Uh, we say it before. Okay. Depending and on what these guys can do, but that's that doesn't. I don't. That's not where my life oh, is. Oh wait, you can lock them into assault. When an enemy unit is within one of this warlord has chosen to fall back, you can roll a d6 unless any models in that unit have a minimum move characteristic on a four up. That unit cannot fall back. Is that part of the same warlord trait? Yes. Oh, well, that's a really good one. Okay, yeah. so I saw something about this in the wording. It does not say that you have to be locked in combat with the Inquisitor, right? Within six, uh, can perform when an enemy unit within one of this warlord is chosen to fall back. So, so you, you would have to be in close combat have to, be. to be within an inch. Yeah. Not, uh, well, not, the not only in all senses. So here's here's what I saw about this: is that like technically speaking, you can pull off the kill a flyer on a four up if. That guy is within one inch of a flyer, so it's not locked in combat with him. But if you had, say, a slaplin locked in combat with a flyer that tried to fall back, you could play that. How? It says within an inch. Like, you can't be within an inch unless you're no. actually in, locked in combat with something. Agreed. The only time... Uh, I thought you could, could place... Uh, like, no. if if you're locked in combat and the flyer consolidates. And then now you're in combat if it, if, it, if it ends up with an inch of you. The only time that you're allowed to be more than an inch, the outside of an inch rule applies is when you're locked in close combat. I'm pretty sure that's correct. Yeah, that's how you buy. I mean, that's that's why they make a little one inch measurement on the back of these templates so you can make sure that you body block people per, uh, correctly. So the next one is uh, for order of Xenos only. But also now, real quick, it does show you that like they learned their lesson from the snare from yeah. White Scars where we were talking about how we were just going to stop flyers and blow them up because you roll a four. Right. So, they're, them up. so they're saying like, they're saying, okay, that's not our intent. Yep. Got it. it makes sense. Usually we're beta testing for them. We've, their we've, their yeah. intent is that things that fucking are literal jets are unaffected. <laughs> uh, the next one I think is going to probably see some play. While this warlord is on the battlefield, roll one D six. Each time your opponent uses a strategy on five up, you gain one command point. But, yep. Classically always handy. And that's a, yep. that's a warlord trait? Yep. Uh, then the Ordo Malleus one is, this warlord knows one additional power from the Telethesa discipline and can manifest one additional power in your psyche phase and attempt to deny one additional power in Always your psyche Always useful. Phase. Always useful. Guess who has that? Mr. Cotizzle? Cody is. Cotizzle. So... It's a name I haven't heard in a long time. <laughs> Quite some time. So he's 90 points. Um, he comes with a refractor field, so five of them vulnerable save. He has that unquestionable wisdom. Who cares? Spy network. When this enemy, when an enemy unit is set up on the battlefield as reinforcements, you can select one friendly order of Malleus unit within six. The selected unit can shoot at that enemy unit as so if it, has it were to be your an order Malice phase. unit. Huh? Has to be an Ordo Malus unit. Has to be an Ordo Malus unit, which I think think gray knights are i'd have to check the keywords but they are order malleus okay. i don't know if they're keywords oh, you're a they can't possibly can't be gray knights because gray knights are still on their apology tour and are not allowed to do anything cool fact oh so um, in the chat it says you can be within an inch of an aircraft because of the faq see that's what i thought like i i saw that on the oh, okay. competitive group that because of their yeah, base that's what I was, or right. Weird. Yeah. So like Agreed, technically, technically he can't do anything to it, but he's within one inch. So, I mean, like it seems really hard to set up and probably would never come up, but I did see people talking about that, that by the wording of the rules, it was possible. Yeah. Huh. Um, 
So now the second part of this this rule um, to fire Overwatch is new. In addition, once per battle when your opponent uses a stratagem, this model can use its spy network. If it does, your opponent must spend one additional command point to resolve that stratagem or else it has okay. no effect. Um, and See, any- that, that was one of the spicy things I was waiting for. How do you, who has that? Coatsy? Coates, yeah. That's just a okay, rule he has? So, uh, let's just go ahead and say it. Literally, the only thing worth taking out of this is Cody is for right. I mean, right now, multiple just, reasons for multiple reasons. This being one of them. So that's just his thing. That's his thing. Fuck, that's powerful. I mean, the other thing is that he gives out a invulnerable bubble. No, he doesn't. Which one is the Inquisitor that does it? I thought it was Cody as. Uh-uh. Oh, well, I mean, he can use psychic powers. Let's check those. He gets like two psychic powers and two denies. It's like an Inquisitor giving out an invulnerable bubble is definitely so a wait, thing. So all time, no fail rate, the whole game, all your CPs cost one more? Or does he have to enact it? As no, it's uh, once per battle when your opponent uses strategy. Oh, so you can do it like in a clutch moment. Okay. Yeah, yes. you're like, ah, the, your vet costs more. So you you so the dude saved three to do the fight twice and you made it for it. So he can't. Yep. Right. So uh, you got to like... It's powerful. So yeah, what are the second powers? Uh, let's see. So the first three were already there, and they're also the ones that um, Eisenhorner has. So Terrify, uh, Subtract One from Leadership, Can't Overwatch. That's a good one. Warp Charge 6, yep. Psychic Fortitude, Warp Charge 4, uh, Imperium Unit Within 12, Morale Test is automatically passed. Paraphrasing, of course. Three, Dominate. Warp charge six, select one enemy within 12 of the psyker that's not a vehicle. Roll 3d6 if the total is greater than the model's leadership. That model can immediately shoot with one weapon as if it were your shooting phase or make one attack as if it were your fighting phase. In either case, shoot that model as a separate unit that is part of your army when shooting or making that close combat attack. And I think that's that whole out of sequence thing. So you don't get it's one weapon. It's not the model like the old days. Like, yeah. Uh, four, mental interrogation, warp charge value six. Select an enemy character within 12, invisible. Until the start of your next psychic phase, when resolving an attack made by that model, subtract one from the hit roll. Debuff? Not, not uh, bad. So it works on any model, though? Uh, any character. Oh, character. Any <laughs> character. And if your army is battleforged, roll 3d6 of the vault. Result is equal to or greater than the model's leadership. You gain a command point, too. Okay. Command point manipulations. I'm with it. Uh, psychic pursuit. Warp charge value of seven. If manifested, select one enemy character that only contains models with wound characteristic of 10, of less than 10, and is within 18 and visible to the psyker. Then select one friendly order unit within six of the psyker. Until the end of your next shooting phase, that order can target the character even if he's not the closest enemy unit. All right. What's the most powerful Ordo Malice shooting tank? Is it the Promethean Land Raider? What is the thing? We've got a couple things here that I need to I need to know. What are we saying can shoot things that come in through reinforcements? And what the fuck is shooting a character out of sequence that's gonna kill it? Oh, like maxed out. Yeah. Give me chat I'm calling to the chat. What are the sickest shooting platforms that have that keyword? For Ordo. I'm still wondering if Great Ice have Ordo Malice or not. Yeah, do I gotta it. look that up. Um, six cast castigation were the were value of six. If manifested, select one enemy within eighteen invisible. Roll three d six. If the total exceeds the lowest leadership characteristic in that unit, that unit suffers d three mortal wounds. Then there's three bonus that are keyed to a specific ordo. So you've got order hereticus, uh, ascertainment. So it's like chaos, hazard. where you got one for each god. Yeah, basically. Uh, warp charge value of six. Select an enemy unit within 12 until the end of your next psychic phase. Subtract one from attacks. Characteristic of models in that unit to a minimum of one. Roll 2d6 if the total is equal to or greater than the highest leadership. Then at the start of your next psychic phase when resolving an attack made by a model in that unit, subtract one from the hit roll. Oh, so debuff, I like it. Hmm. So neg one attack, neg one hit. Okay. Yeah. Ordo Xenos, um, Warp Charge Value 5. Until the start of your next psychic phase, Ordo Xenos units within 6 
of the Psyker can be selected as a target attacks only if they are the closest visible enemy unit and can only be selected as a target of charges if they are within six inches of the target of the charging unit. Hmm. A lot of words. A lot of words. Uh, this is the bubble one you're talking about that Ordo Malleus does have. Has a war charge value of six if manifested, select one friendly Imperial Infantry or Imperial Biker within 12. Until the start of your next psychic phase, the models in that unit have a five up invulnerable save. Yeah, and so, so he can, Cody so is, he can, is Malleus, right? So, so you he, take yep. Cody as because he's like the so he the can psychically, one for that. psychically give something an involved save that wouldn't normally have it. Yep. Infantry or bikers. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he's the most useful. It's very useful. For ninety yeah. points, doesn't seem bad at all. Yeah. And two two denies and two casts, like yeah. we just got to because one of those so, can be smite. So chat's saying that like Grey Knights don't have that Ordo shenanigans but like what's is the prometheus oh. land raider any good like what the hell does that thing do people are saying that has it the prometheus land raider has is that a forge oh, that's the one flamers on the side and the heavy bolters on oh the front. so it's gotta be all close yeah he would have to be close fuck so is it gonna be plasma gun acolytes what is it gonna be So if we're if we're going based off of this, like the only units, quote unquote, that are Inquisition units is like an Acolyte, Demon Host, Inquisitor, Jakairo Weaponsmith, and Ordo Malleus Inquisitor and Terminator Armor. Can yeah. be and I guess everything unit? else is like index still. So Jakaro is there an index units? because this is wouldn't this override it? Yes. Yeah. So, J- so you can take an Alkalite and you can give him war gear off the war gear list. For now. J- so real quick, Jakiro, does he still can he do any kind of weapon still or what's his deal? Yeah, uh let's see. So he's got starting shooting phase, you can select one order unit within three and roll a D6. No, wait. Okay, yeah. so his weapon is 20, 24 inches heavy one, strength eight, neg three, three damage. One or shot. 12, 12 inch assault, salt six, string four, neg one, one. Okay. Uh, What's his ballistic skill? Four. Yep. One shot or six shots. Is that how that one works? Yeah. Yep. So you get one shot of a, what, like a crack missile basically with three flat damage mm-hmm. or yeah. six shots of a bolter with minus one AP. Does he, can you take a couple of them, like three or four in a unit? He's a he's an elite. Yeah. So you could it's take, just one guy at a time. Attachment. Uh, but you can only have oh, one. He's one guy in a group. unit. Okay, that's right. He buffs the unit. Okay. Yeah, he buffs the unit. Okay. Okay. So when so some of these units are not. So we got some great rules and really hard. And it's really hard to use them to their super efficiency. Because the alkalites what uh, ballistic skill four up too. So they're not even. There's no reroll bubble of one or anything. Yeah, I think like the most powerful stuff that an accolade can take is like a melta. Pl- probably plasma or melta, right? Yeah, they can take like combi weapons. Uh, yeah, it seems like that's it. Like they can take if you can get like one unit with with a with some good with some bullets that matter. It'd be sick because then you could also do the whole like shoot that character. But that's a bonus. Just being able to jack up somebody's CP, get into five up and vulnerable for your for your fucking you know, Centauri your Imperial Fist Centaurians. So the yeah, Prometheus Land Raider has two quad heavy bolters. No conversation. God, Melta, it's, it's plasma. probably like 300 points or something stupid, right? Condemner bolt gun. Yeah, so I think I think that's the rather wrong route to take. I think you just take the Inquisitor, and if there's a way to make the acolytes do something, do one unit of those. But you don't need it. I'll, no, I, I take the guy. For, I take the man for the deny the witch, for the invulnerable bubble, uh, and for the CP bleeding. Yeah, yeah. Kudias is the guy. He's he's really the only one worth taking. Yeah, I mean, plus he's pretty nasty. So, I mean, like he is a person, like he's a human. So he's strength three, 
He has a master crafted demon hammer uh, with no negative to hit. But because he is strength three, it's going to be strength six. Strength six is good against a lot of infantry models, so he's not going to be killing any like night titans or anything. But you know, like he's pretty nasty. Yeah, that ability, his ability to just ruin somebody's CP day. Yeah, I love that. Definitely makes him think twice. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple more wound psychic powers. I mean, there's all sorts of avenues there. Like, I like. Hmm. He's, there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of play there. It's just like the old days. Like, you know, I'm playing Inquisitors. I mean, I have Codias and a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> exactly. That's, like, remember the um, we the roll Castellans the of the Imperium formation in Seventh Edition. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, dog. I played Come the Apocalypse armies that were just demons, and my Come the Apocalypse ally was Inquisition, just Codia, so I could reroll the seize, or so so <laughs> that I, so I couldn't get seized on. You know, like basically, right. Like, no, we're back to that. Not quite that, but it's it's got some play. I like it. Yeah. So I mean, just I mean, just giving or, a unit. A or you just taking a, a you just taking Inquisitor outside. You just take a Xenos Inquisitor. You get that five up command point regen. Yeah, I mean, true. There's lots of ways to get that, and I like that. There's a lot of play here. That's what you're saying. Because it doesn't break it's, it doesn't break doctrines. It's not just Mr. Coteezy. There's other plays here, but he is really good because he also comes with a special Coteezy ability. Which I like. I think if I was playing Custodes, I'm not sure I would take Coteezy. I think I would just take an order of Xenos Inquisitor just to try to recoup some CPs. Mm-hmm. Cheapest. This is like the same point. It's literally as, like uh, a 50 point guy that unlocks that for you. Oh, let's see. Just a generic Inquisitor is 55 points. Uh, 55 <laughs> point CP regen unlock. Yeah, that's incredible. Nailed it. For an army that normally to get that has to take more than 55 points. But, you know, to unlock, when you if you're running the Loyal 32, you are getting five CPs with it. So, I mean, do the math. <laughs> yeah, but you don't get regen. Yeah, but like you do get five CPs. Oh, I guess you could. I mean, you could because Grand Strategist... But let's say you didn't. What is uh, the loyal thirty-two? How many points is that? Like uh, two hundred and forty points or something? Yeah, it's like three hundred ish. So three. So you're spending three hundred points instead of fifty-five, right? So it's five po- five times more expensive, but it gives you five CPs or three CPs. Mm. Or, no, no, five CPs, right? Whereas your fifty-five gives you a CP on a five up which mathematically is only going to happen twice, maybe three times. And if it happened every turn, which is unlucky, which is unre- unrealistic, then you, then you made it, you made yourself even. So like, there's that, but I do agree with you. 55 points to unlock C- CP regen. Dope. Pretty cool. He's got a five up in ball too. And he can uh, deny the witch things that target him. But it's good for fifty five. But I like Coteez. Like he's the he's the man. That that ability, like just knowing in your pocket, you're waiting for your your opponent who's always gonna save these CPs for this last thing. You know, whenever I you know, and you, you could just rob him of that. That's so clutch. Nobody expects the Inquisition. Not one person. Yep. Loyal 32 uh, does give up points, Darthar, uh, but it also gives you board control, board presence, uh, bubble wraps, and the ability to hide dudes and buildings for engineer, and also grand strategist, so you can also get the same ability. And I think grand strategist comes with rerolls, doesn't it? Like one reroll per game? One, yeah. Yeah, so like also a bonus free CP. Yep. So. Pretty good. I like it. Uh, quick breakdown: yeah. Sisters of Battles, Miracle Dice. Break down how the dice pools work, Wyatt. So, this is a mechanic that has been ported over from Age of Sigmar. Yeah. And basically, the way it works is you generate a pool of dice with random values. Uh, when you gain a Miracle Dice, you roll it 
and whatever that value is, uh, you keep. So if I roll a four, it's a value of a four. If it's a six, it's a value of a six. And you take that and you set it off to the side. And then at any point in the game, you can substitute uh, a dice roll for that. Um, they don't really go into whether or not you can use it as a reroll, but I'm just going to go ahead and assume that it's like, I'm just not even going to roll that dice. I'm going to use a miracle dice. I don't think they would allow you to use the miracle dice as a reroll mechanic, but as a substitute mechanic. Um, and then to gain more than the one that you generate each battle round, there are some conditions. And if you do uh, any one of these, you gain a miracle dice at the end of the phase. Uh, vengeance, a unit in your army with the Axe of Faith, destroys a unit. Uh, sacrifice, a character with Axe of Faith is killed. Uh, purity, a psychic power is resisted by a unit with Axe of Faith without performing an Act of Faith to do so. And Valor. Which is very you, unlikely because their rule is a one dice, deny the witch. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and then Valor, you roll an unmodified one for a morale test taken for a unit with Acts of Faith without performing an Act of Faith to do so. Really cool. The Probably the coolest faith-based mechanic that Sisters have ever got. I fucking love it. Yeah, it's, it's really unique and interesting. Um, as I've been thinking about it and kind of looking at what they've been talking about with it, um, some people have expressed concerns about mm -hmm. it but honestly like i don't think it's going to be that big of a deal uh because one it's conditional like so you're only ever going to get one per battle round yeah it's so, one per battle round right or yeah one it's per one per battle round and then you have to do this stuff to get more and then on top of that it's an rng value so you may never get that like five that you want for that clutch five invul save or five flat damage on a damage Yeah, roll. think about this turn two a very reasonable se sequence of events going to turn three you killed units each turn right if it says it's per phase so you can actually get up to like you can get actually more per battle round Right, because it says per phase, and then at the end of the battle round, you get okay. So it's not as nearly as much as you think it is. So you get one at the beginning of each battle round, and you gain one at the end of a phase if one or more of the following conditions right. are met. So, so like, like in the, shooting the most phase, you can get is two a turn, or well, not not a no. turn, but like you can get um, you can get way more four. Like so, I go, so I go first. I have one. I kill a unit in my shooting phase with a faith unit. I have two. You go. You kill a character. I have now gotten one. Now I go again, I kill something. I have one and I got one because it's that battle round. I already have five. Now going into turn three, I on my next turn three, I actually have five values I can roll if that happened. Realistically, it'll be four though. So it's very realistic if you are if you're not getting your face pushed in, that you have four faith dice locked and loaded, miracle dice for turn three for a Zeta strike or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so now if you have the key units in position you can make things happen guaranteed if those rolls are decent you only roll four times though right yeah so, once you roll it it's set but what i love about it is that's an rng that you substitute for a guaranteed result and things that also do rng and using exorcist as an example which is one of the coolest tanks they've ever had it's d6 shots and it does d6 damage so one of their best tanks that everyone takes threes of gets really solid, reliable results. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> every time you roll a four or higher on a miracle dice, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I like it. I think it's really cool. Uh, it's not game breaking at all. It's very cool. And I think you're only going to see the oh shit factor going into the late game on a close game. Uh, and you still, you're sitting on three really good dice rolls and you use them all in the last couple turns and you win the fucking game. Like one I can think of specifically is like, I have a three in my pool. It's their last shooting phase and I have one model left and I have to take one save and I have no CPs left on my last sister standing objective. If they kill that sister, they get their kill that turn, giving them a point. They take the objective from me and now they hold more and they win the game. But I have this miracle dice that has a three on it. So I just passed that save. Won the game. Right. So there's going to be clutch. Oh, shit. 
moments that I think are, that's really good game design. I think it's a really cool thing. Hmm. Yeah, that'll be a, a lot of fun. I don't think it's going to do anything like wild for, you know, like just crushing games or anything, but I mean, there's going to be, there's gonna be, be games really where mechanic. start of the battle round, you roll the six, right? You're just waiting to use it, right? So you're <laughs> like, so, oh shit, I rolled a six. Okay. I'm going to shoot my fucking first execute, exorcist, uh, exorcist at your, your thing. Uh, oh, I got four hits. Uh, I did uh, three wounds. Uh, uh, I'm going to roll two of these organically and put a six in there automatically for damage. Blew it up. Things like that. And then you're going to roll another six. So there's going to be games where you just roll really solid miracle dice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, you know, but even then it's going to be like one thing, another thing. So they do mention um, the sacred rites, which are sort of your uh, chapter tactic or combat doctrines for sisters of battle. Like if you bring only sisters of battle, um, one thing they haven't specified one way or the other is whether or not you get the miracle dice mechanic, uh, based on like, just, you can do that with like having units in your army or if it's only hundred percent sisters of battle. So we don't know yet. Yeah. We don't know yet. We don't know yet, but it looks good. Uh, sisters players should be happy. They're getting some really unique, exciting game mechanics. Uh, I'm, I'm stoked. Inquisition and sisters are here. Don't call to come back. I mean, that's subject. That's subjective. But I mean, they have technically been here for years. All right, we did it. Good show. That was it? We can go now. Mm-hmm. Uh, sweet. Oh, um, and I, I put my pants. Let me just get that on yeah. there. We haven't talked about <laughs> pooping our pants yet. I mean, we didn't talk about Black Templars, so they must suck. Sweeping generalizations oh. about a codex that's not even out yet. Yeah. We did talk about other stuff. Dang it. We didn't we'll get talk about Black Templars next time. No big deal. Hey, Black Templars well, thing. Go, uh, you, if you're on the internet, just Google it. <laughs> there you go. Oh, God, you can't be telling people that. Why would they tune in otherwise? We are it's only the bait. 16th podcast in, in hobbies, so I think there's like only 16 podcasts. So. Uh, that was, that was at our high mark, a high water mark. Oh yeah. my oh, okay. god! Uh, god we this month, so we're so we're actually worse than that. Uh, I think it fluctuates around 40 to 60, <laughs> 6, 16. 40 to 16 out of 50. Got it. We well, just yeah, learned. I'm sure when Haspel gets back, we'll have way more to talk about with Sisters of Battle. He's on vacation right now, right? Yeah. Yep. He's in the uh, the, the Hobbit what? land. The land of the Hobbits. He's his, Gondor called for aid and he answered. He did. God, no, nice. I think uh, we'll, we'll have the Cast Legion stuff probably next week. There'll probably be previews out by then. So we'll, we'll sum it all up. So you can just Google that stuff too. You don't have to watch the show. Actually, we don't even know why you're listening to us still. Yeah. And like, you must have your, a really long drive. And to your earlier point, if you do Google stuff, usually Spiky Bits is what comes up. Right. All is planned. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. It's all almost right. like he's good at what he does. At least twice. Sometimes. Spiky Bits is only 16th best model hobby website. <laughs> Rude. It's too clear. Right. Yeah. That's it. I'm leaving. So make sure, <laughs> uh, make sure to head over to the longwar.net for exclusive content, early access videos, and more. Become a lifetime veteran of the long war today and get that exclusive esports jersey or something else very shiny out of our store for signing up. I.e., we promise to drink all of that money, mostly scotch. Yeah, not gonna I might lie. give some to Ken. I don't know. He will probably give. He'll send me my cut of the scotch in a Ziploc bag with a straw. (laughs) (laughs) That's a Capri Sun. It's completely different. (laughs) 